In our number 10 spot, we have Dolce, New Mexico. In the US, there is a town by the name of Dolce, and it is in New Mexico, close to the Colorado border. This isn't just any town in the US, though. This is a town that is believed to be the home base to what is known as Dolce Base, a giant underground facility where weird experiments are done, and it is believed that advanced biological technologies were developed. Allegedly, a former government explosive engineer took part in building a secret underground base in Dolce, New Mexico in 1979. His name was Philip Schneider. According to Philip, this base is where he once came face to face with a gray, slimy alien. And there was also an underground battle where 60 people lost their life. Of course, this does feel something like out of a movie, but wouldn't that be the best perfect place to hide the truth? Let's throw the truth in movies so people think, well, that can't be possible because that's just something out of a movie. As all whistleblowers tend to do though, Philip was yet another person who supposedly took his own life. Very suspicious. In our number nine spot today, we have Lake Nyos. So this isn't a place that is necessarily illegal to visit, but it definitely is a place that you should only live or even really visit at your own risk. Lake Nyos is located in Cameroon and it is different from any regular old lake because of the volcanic crater that it's sits in. The magma floor releases carbon dioxide in both the water and the surrounding air, making it a less than ideal place to live and breathe. Usually the CO2 just dissipates into the air, mostly harmlessly, but in 1986 there was a limnic eruption that caused a catastrophe. A limnic eruption is very rare, but it's what happens when dissolved carbon dioxide suddenly erupts from lake waters, which then goes on to form a gas cloud. This resulting gas cloud is extremely dangerous and is capable of displacing the oxygen in the area, which of course is lethal to any living thing, which is exactly what happened in 1986. This limnic eruption caused a noxious cloud of more than 1 million tons of CO2. This ended up taking the lives of 1,700 people in the area, as well as 3,500 livestock, which made it the first known large scale asphyxiation caused by a natural event. Despite the threat of another eruption, as well as the lake's weakening walls that could result in a massive flood, people have resettled the area around the lake. I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't risk it, which makes me wonder why these people chose to. I'm sure there's gotta be some reason though. In our number 8 spot today we have the Svalbard Seed Vault. Deep within a mountain that sits in between Norway and the North Pole sits this vault that is more than 320 feet inside. This vault holds a massive collection of seeds. Like we're talking about 890,000 different preserved seed samples from nearly every country in the world. The vault that holds these seeds is made to withstand both man-made and natural disasters and the seeds inside are meant to be kept safe so in the case of some sort of huge disaster, the seeds kept safe inside would ensure the continuation of a wide variety of really diverse food options. The door to this vault is only opened a few times a year and just a few people are allowed inside in order to deliver seeds to the shelves. In our number 7 spot today we have St Kilda. St Kilda is the most remote settlement of the British Isles and it is so isolated that it is often cut off by storms for weeks and sometimes even months at one time. That is most likely the reason as to why the previous inhabitants had developed a culture, economy, and government that was completely separate and different to their English rulers. Unfortunately, between missionaries and officials coming to the island in an attempt to change their way of life that was working perfectly fine for them, their sources of income dwindling, births not being able to keep up with the death rate, and the emigration rate combined, as well as the inevitable disease-ridden tourists coming to their island for whatever reason, things for those who once lived on the island changed drastically and it was decided that they would evacuate this island in 1930. Since then, people have tried to resettle the island, but none have permanently remained, likely because of the isolation. In our number six spot today, we have Surtsey Island. This island was born in 1963, and by that I mean it emerged from the sea in that year just off of the coast of Iceland after four years of being formed by an undersea volcano. A brand new island. What could we possibly do with that? While I'm sure humans could find a million and one ways to ruin 
ruin it. Surprisingly, we decided not to do that at all. Instead, this island was protected in order to allow scientists to study how new ecosystems form and what happens when there's really no human involvement in that. This means that those who are permitted to go to the island have some very strict rules to adhere to, and it's not like just anyone is allowed to go. I mean, I couldn't go, you probably couldn't go. Why well, don't want to make that assumption? I don't know. Maybe you're a scientist. One of these rules is that there are no seeds allowed on the island and no using the facilities either. The last rule is because one day when scientists found a tomato growing on the island, they were confused as to how. Turns out somebody had gone number two not too long before and thus a new poop tomato was grown from the ground. Kind of gross, kind of cool, not gonna lie. In our number five spot today we have Centralia. Located in Pennsylvania, this town is often referred to as one of the gateways to hell. That is due to the fire that spread in an underground coal mine underneath the town in 1962. Despite the years it's been, the fire still blazes underground, which causes the smoke and poisonous gases to rise up from the ground, not only causing an eerie appearance, but also a very serious health hazard. The temperatures can be so hot in areas that one guy's backyard was measured at 626 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes the fire will also burn through supports underground, which in the end turns into a sinkhole. This has caused pets, wildlife, and residents to unsuspectingly get swallowed up into the hole. In 1980, before the US government ordered a total evacuation of the town, but a handful of residents refused to leave and even went to court over the right to stay in the town for as long as they live. In our number four spot today, we have Pine Gap. This location is in Australia and it is a heavily guarded and top secret facility. It is said that Pine Gap is actually a joint defense facility between the Australian and the United States governments. It is said that it is operated by both the CIA and NSA, that it is strictly off limits to anyone not involved or given high security clearance. Apparently, at first, this place was said to be a space research center, but now it has become abundantly clear that it is actually used to support the United States in both intelligence as well as military activities. If someone decided to trespass into this top secret area, it would undoubtedly put them in a whole world of trouble. Kind of like an Area 51 deal. In our number three spot today, we have La Oroya. Located in Peru, this town has a population of 30,000 people, despite the metal smelter contamination that has been seen since 1922. The smelter closed in 2009 after the company that ran it declared bankruptcy, but here's how that happened in the first place. The American owned company ran out of money because they had to fund the environmental cleanup and the anti pollution measures. Seems like maybe they should have chosen a different path. Seems like it didn't pay off to pollute someone else's air. I don't know. I guess they forgot that there's consequences for actions. It still remains as one of the most polluted areas in the entire world, and the toxic metals have gone on to infect the water, the soil, and the air. While it is completely unsafe to live there, people still do and sadly they suffer the extreme adverse effects of it. In our number two spot today we have Mezgor. This is a location in Russia that finds its home in the Ural Mountains. This little town is top secret and is completely forbidden to any kind of visitor. This is said to be because the town is apparently home to Russia's nuclear missiles and the rules are so strict that people aren't even allowed near the town or its vicinity. There are also rumors that suggest suggest that this town contains Mount Yamantau and that inside this mountain there is the Russian government's extensive bunker, making this just another reason why this town is completely cut off to anyone who isn't a very high ranking official. In our number one spot today we have Wittenoom. This place in Australia is the home to a former blue asbestos mine which is exactly what makes it one of the most contaminated places in the country. I mean this literally. The roads were paved with asbestos. Even after the mine shut down in 1966. While this city was once the home to 20,000 residents, the population dropped significantly after the deaths of 300 former mine workers from mesothelioma. Apparently it was decided that it would be too expensive to clean up the town, so instead the government just declared it unfit to inhabit and took it off the maps. While most people have since left the town, it is said that three residents refused to leave and still remain in the almost completely abandoned town. Coming in number 10, we have the Empire State building 103rd floor viewing room. 
I mean, if you want to see the whole New York skyline and you don't want to break the bank on your trip to the top of the Empire State Building, and you want to grab a drink, you better believe that there's a hotel called The Standard that has all of those things. But for those of you who really want to head to the top of New York and can't do it without popping into the iconic Empire State Building, then I'll have you know that you're not even getting the best view. You spent all that money to go to the top of the Empire State Building only to find out that there is a secret room that you are not qualified to check out. There happens to be a 103rd floor that you can't get to. This helps the rich and famous see the whole city without tourist crowds. Now I'm sorry, but just going to the front desk and asking if you can get there isn't enough. You actually have to be someone of status. Unless you're very rich, very famous, or a government official, you are not going anywhere near the 103rd floor. I'm sorry, but you're just not important enough. The government and the people who run the building don't want you going up to that floor because it's going to lose its attraction. I'm sorry, but you're going to be stuck on the 102nd floor, looking up, wondering which important people are hovering above you. In our number 9 spot, we have Mount Weather, Virginia. Apparently there is a secret city or military base located in a mountain in Virginia. Mount Weather is located just 74 kilometers from Washington, D.C. This is a place that is sort of an emergency operations center in case there's a war or an apocalypse, for example. Apparently though, it is used to house all the high highest levels of government officials if there were to ever be an emergency and they needed to be in a safe place. It also protects some national treasures, just like the movie National Treasure. It was built in the Cold War era and it's a fully functional city equipped with hospitals, cafeterias, a train station, to name a few. Well, if an apocalypse does happen, at least we can rest easy knowing our government officials have used our tax dollars to keep themselves safe. Am I right or am I right or am I right? In our number 8 spot we have Fort Knox. Believed to be one of the most secure places in the world, Fort Knox is apparently a military base that is located in Kentucky. Honestly though, I really don't think it is THE most secure place. I bet you Area 51 is more secure, but whatever. Area 51 doesn't even show up on Google World, so that's top security for ya. Anyways, people believe this place to be another holding area for treasures, but this one is allegedly the place where the Holy Grail is said to be. Huh, that's a crazy rumor that I wish could be proven true. Apparently also 2% of the world's metals are stored there, but alas, I bet we the little people may never know as walls are made of concrete, so ain't no burglar ever getting in and making it out alive anytime soon. In our number 7 spot we have the American NSA Spy Hubs. For any non-Americans watching, I bet you that your own country also has a spy hub and is doing the same thing, but yeah, this one is about the American spy hubs. So don't just think it's an American thing. Apparently in the US there are windowless skyscrapers and those are believed to be the NSA hubs. You think they're watching your every move and keeping a tab on you? Yeah, they probably are. Especially if you're someone that might have the ability to be heard by many. If you don't, then and meh, I wouldn't worry about it. You're not a threat. Apparently these buildings are restricted and heavily secretive and are built to withstand terrorist attacks, which is super interesting to think about because what does that even mean? Are they made of some kind of metal that can't explode? Like, huh? I don't know. Apparently these states have confirmed NSA hubs. Atlanta, Dallas, Chicago, Los Angeles, and New York City. In our number 6 spot we have Diego Garcia. Okay, so this one is fascinating to me. Diego Garcia is a British island that apparently is owned by the US, and it is where they allegedly keep a secret underwater base. Apparently it is one of the most strategically located places for the US military. Allegedly it is a place where there is a top secret CIA prison where terrorist suspects are interrogated. In 2007 the Pentagon aka the government granted a 32 million dollar contract to add a submarine base to the dock. So really that's all you need to know. 
what they are keeping in that submarine, probably the creatures of Atlantis and secretive documents of course. Apparently so many of the original settlers, ancestors from the island were kicked off long ago and have tried to sue to get their land back, but they of course been unsuccessful. Which honestly, one of the world's most powerful governments has taken over, so no wonder it's a lost cause. In our number 5 spot we have the Marshall Islands. The Marshall Islands are another island that is owned by the US. It became quite occupied by the US in World War II. The Marshall Islands eventually became a sort of testing grounds for nuclear testing between 1946 to 1962. Apparently during this time the US conducted 67 nuclear tests. The repercussions of such testing were of course quite high. The remaining radiation on the island has been the reason that most of the original settlers have never returned even though they are allowed to at this point in time. Oh yeah, now that we've destroyed your island, here you go, you can have it back. Apparently there are high levels of radiation in all of the crops as you can probably imagine after 67 nuclear tests and so that is not suitable for anyone to make a home there and live comfortably. Apparently Bob Hope the comedian was once quoted talking about the island and he said, we located the one spot on earth that hadn't been touched by the war and blew it to hell. Yep, that sounds like humans to me. In our number 4 spot we have the Menwith Hill Royal Air Force Station in the UK. This is a Royal Air Force base located in the United Kingdom, but don't let that confuse you, it's actually leased to the US. So this is really a US military base aka a US spy hub. It was formed around 1954 when the British War Office purchased 550 acres of land and leased it to the US military. Apparently everything that is done there is of course top secret naturally and it was originally set up to help with the Cold War. People believe that they are spying on communications being done in Europe and Asia. Whatever goes on there though remains extremely restricted despite the large amount of protests that the locals have done over the years. What's interesting about this space is that it looks like a bunch of enlarged golf balls, which makes it a sight that you cannot miss. In our number 3 spot we have North Brother Island. This is an island off the coast of New York that was originally purchased with the intention of turning it into a hospital. It became Riverside Hospital and it became a place for people who had very contagious diseases uh, such as tuberculosis, yellow fever, smallpox, to name a few. It eventually became a quarantine place for military veterans until it became a rehab for heroin addicts. Yeah, after the doctors stopped prescribing it, the least they could do was offer a rehab center. Today the island is actually forbidden to visit. Apparently it was the inspiration behind Leo DiCaprio's movie Shutter Island and there is a lot of speculation around the mysteriousness of the island. Is this another secret base that we don't know about? Who knows? In our number 2 spot we have Robins Island. Robins Island is another island located off the coast of New York and it is also forbidden to the public. It is a very restricted area that was once the place for many business owners and powerful leaders to go to for many years. Tales of successful and failed business ventures circle the island as well as pictures of presidents Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon whom were once there. Now the island is owned by Mr. Louis Bacon who keeps it as a nature reserve and sanctuary, so it is still not open to the public. I bet you there are still powerful business meetings still done on the island, we just don't have any up to date photo proof yet. There's probably some kind of Illuminati cult base there I bet. In our number 1 spot we have the closed city of Mercury, Nevada, USA. Some people don't know this, but there have been a lot of cities that have been restricted to the public over the last couple hundred years. One of them that is still very restricted to the public is Mercury, Nevada. Nevada in the US. This is a city that was thriving in the 50s with a population of 10,000, having all the normal amenities, you know, schools, hospitals, restaurants, etc. But eventually, it became the home to a bunch of scientists and then eventually became restricted to approximately 500 people who are mainly researchers. It is still very heavily restricted and you need government clearance in order to enter. Maybe that's because it is so close to Area 51. 
and it is within the phenomena of the Nevada Triangle where strange occurrences happen. People vanish without a trace or disappear and reappear in a spot they weren't before. Sightings of aliens have also been reported. So perhaps maybe it's best that you can't go to Mercury. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe some of the aliens live there and that wouldn't be pleasant to see. But whatever is going on there, it is highly secretive and I doubt will ever be filled in, at least not anytime soon. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Lascaux Cave. This cave is located in France and it got itself the title of being a UNESCO World Heritage Site after its discovery in 1940 due to the incredible prehistoric paintings that can be seen on the walls. Of course, this became a popular tourist destination and people were jumping at the chance to see these works of art completed by the early humans. But as it turns out, breathing is not very good for the art. The carbon monoxide that visitors were expelling was beginning to cause damage to these cave paintings and of course, once they're gone, there's nothing that we can do to get them back. This led to the site being closed to the public in 1963. Now the only people allowed in are researchers and preservationists who work to make sure that the art stays for as long as possible. Coming in at number nine, we have the Mount Rushmore Vault. Now this next one is going to sound like it was pulled out of a comic book, but I will let you know that it is 100% real. Behind Abraham Lincoln's head on Mount Rushmore is a secret tunnel that leads to a massive room that is full of US documents. Like Come on, I remember Team America World Police, they had a secret base in Mount Rushmore, but this couldn't be the truth. But would I lie to you? This was actually the original vision of the man who built Mount Rushmore. And can I just say for a moment that this is probably the most patriotic thing that anyone has ever done? I mean, you could put a flag in your front yard, but that is nothing compared to the amount of work that went into building faces of some of the most famous presidents in America into the side of a mountain. But inside this vault are some government documents. Now, what's on those documents, no one really knows. It could be anything. They could be extremely valuable. It could be the Declaration of independence, or it could be just a bunch of boring files that don't really mean anything. And you're not going to get invited into and you are not going to get invited into this vault unless you have some sort of government power. Coming in at number eight, we have the Lehman Brothers Secret Times Square building. When you look at all of the massive buildings in Times Square, you probably think that rent must be super high to have a spot in one of those buildings. Well, you would be right, but there is something that is even more valuable than renting the space. It's ads. If every building in Times Times Square is covered in ads because companies will pay out the butt to have all their stuff promoted up there. And the Lehman Brothers saw this as an opportunity and decided that was all they needed for their building. One of the centerfold buildings in Times Square is owned by the Lehman Brothers and there is nothing in it. If you were to walk around inside this building, you would literally just have open spaces and dangling wires. The whole thing just acts as a massive billboard and it's probably very profitable because they don't need to worry about any building upkeep. Coming in at number seven, we have Ni Hao Hawaii. How big could a secret room be? Well, how about 70 square miles? Well, this one isn't so much a room, but it is very much an island and it is definitely a secret that the government is trying to keep secret from everyone. This place is closed off to visitors. It is a self-sufficient island that only has 130 people living on it, and although the people are allowed to leave, no one is allowed to enter outside of medical services. There are some very strict rules on this island. For one, there is no booze. Just so you know, you wouldn't be able to sneak on the island and have a big party. The people there aren't really into that. Also, there are no guns, which is probably a good thing, but again, it brings down how much excitement there will be at any given time. And this place has chosen a way of life that is very different from our own. They don't have any plumbing, they have no traditional roads, and everything in terms of food is taken from the land by farmers and brought to the people. They do have electricity, however. All of that comes from solar panels, but they do not have internet. So you're going to have to get very good at talking to people. What a scary thought. Coming in at number six, we have the Eiffel Tower apartment. If you go to Paris, you can now see what would be the most expensive apartment in the whole city, and that is the Eiffel Tower apartment. The man who built the Eiffel Tower didn't only do it so he could have his masterpiece be the center of attention. No, he wanted to have the best apartment maybe in the world. At the top of the Eiffel Tower is an apartment that only could be accessed by one man who built the Eiffel Tower himself. 
Gustav Eiffel. Now, people can go visit, but that isn't even the most secret part of this secret room. There's also something that is underneath one of the legs of the Eiffel Tower, and that is a military bunker that can prep troops in the heart of the city without the enemy catching on. Could you imagine a bunch of French troops popping out of the base of the Eiffel Tower? You have to admit, the French have a way with theatrics. Coming in at number five, we have Club 33. Here's something that the super rich and the government want to keep hidden from you, and even with me telling you about it, there's a good chance that you still won't be able to afford the entrance fee. See, Club 33 is something that is hidden away in Disney World. We all know that Disney World is a place where kids come to have their dreams come true, but the kids aren't roaming around free. They're running around with their parents, who, after a long day in the sun taking care of Rugrats, probably want a drink. Turns out, you can't get booze when you're at Disney World, but you can if you're part of Club 33. This is a members-only club that is somewhat a high roller's lounge. Only the best of the best can join. You need a recommendation to get in, and on top of that, if you can get accepted, you have to pay a $25,000 membership fee, and then $12,000 annually each year after after that. It's very much a status symbol. Some suspect that Club 33 has something to do with Jesus or the devil, since we all know that number 33 has strong religious connotations. I don't know if that's true, but if you're blowing your money at Disney World in that amount, you're probably in the Illuminati. Coming in at number 4, we have the secret train station under Waldorf Astoria. In movies, high-ranking government officials always have some sort of secret underground transportation that they can use to get around, and some of you think that that couldn't be a real thing in real life. There's no way that something like that could exist. Well, think again. Under one of the most famous hotels in New York, a hotel known as the Waldorf Astoria, there is a train station that is only used by the president himself. This is partly because almost every president has stayed there ever since its inception, but it's also one of the most secure ways for the president to travel. No one can get down there, and even if they did, there is a ton of secret features that the rail car has. For all we know, this thing could be built like a Bond car and have heat-seeking missiles that come through the headlights. Coming at number three, we have Room 39. This is one of the most secret places in North Korea, which is already a very secretive place. No one really knows what goes on in Room 39, but people suspect that government workers work in there to try and create revenue for North Korea through illegal activity. Thought that they could be cooking and organizing the distribution of crystal meth, and they are also finding ways to commit billions of dollars in insurance fraud. That is wild. Going at number two, we have the Vatican Bunker. Now, this isn't a place where the Pope can go to hide out if the world starts to end because he was right about Armageddon. I mean, they probably have a room like that, but it won't be as exciting as the one I'm about to tell you about. The Vatican Bunker is a place where they keep all the files that have been held in the Vatican for centuries. We're talking about 1,200 years of paperwork. I mean, I think you could fit most of that stuff onto a hard drive, so I don't know why they're still doing the whole pen and paper thing, but to each their own. But the Vatican archives have all of the juicy details about everything the church has done for a long, long time. You better believe that all of this information is closed to the public. In fact, if you ever get access to this secret bunker, you have to be a high-ranking scholar, and you can only look through certain folders. The Pope will vet everything that an outsider has access to before they are allowed into the bunker. And there is a hard cutoff. Anything that is younger than 75 years old, there is zero access to. That is a hard and fast rule that only the Pope can break. And even with probably the most accepting Pope of all time, he isn't about to let any of this information slip. But there is a lot of people who want to get their hands on those files with all the problems the church has been getting into in recent years. I can't go into details on this channel because it's disturbing, but either you know what I'm talking about or you're going to go look it up right now. And coming in at the number one spot is Area 51. Come on, this has to be number one. What is going on in Area 51? Now, is this a room? Well, kinda, it's an indoor facility, so there is a room in there somewhere, I'm sure. But the whole thing has to be the biggest place that the government is hiding from us. And what is going on in there? We have no idea. I think we could all say aliens, that's probably what we're all thinking. But there could be some tech that will change the world. They could have mech suits in there that are like the ones from Pacific Rim. Just let us in already and we'll stop messing around with the stock market. I promise.